Okay, welcome back to the Bronx Buzz. Thanks to Julio for joining us all the way from Los Angeles. But now, actually, we're going to go to another place in America. We're going to go to Michigan to the author of this book. It's called, if you can see it there, there it is, Freedom Land, Cop City and the Story of New York. It is Anne-Marie Samartino. Nice to have you with us, Anne-Marie. Thank you for having me. I appreciate uh, it. As I mentioned to you, Freedom Land uh, was something that raised my notice. But mm -hmm. it's not about Freedom Land. It's about Co-op City. Right. Um, just talk to us. This is the history. It basically chronicles mm -hmm. the uh, first quarter century That's right. of Co-op City's existence. But uh, just talk about what your interest was. What was the fascination here to say, I'm going to do all this work? <laughs> sure. So I'll start off just by saying I'm a, I'm a history professor. Um, my training is actually in German history. But I grew up in Co-op City. Um, and so I guess in a very like facile way, like it was growing up there that made me want to write about it. But um, really, if you'd asked me when I was growing up, I never would have said I wanted to work on, on Co-op City, but it was living in Berlin while I was doing dissertation research and research for my first book. You know, I talked to Germans and they'd always ask me where in New York I was from. And I found myself comparing Co-op City a lot to these like housing developments in East Berlin. And then at some point after doing, making that comparison like a thousand times, I started wondering like, why is it that Co-op City does look like these housing developments in East Berlin? And that um, prompted me to start researching really the urban planning around Co-op City, really what much, much of what makes up the first chapter. Um, and I never, I, I expected there to be a book on Co-op City um, that I could just no, consult. There, there, there may be some writing on it, but not on the history of it, not like right. today. And there'd been nothing. And so I sort of started doing that research and then um, wrote a number of sort of bigger, you know, articles for historians. And then just sort of felt like there's more to this story. And there's, you know, there's, there's something I have to say about it. And there's research I want to do about it. And so... Yeah. So then I just sort of kept researching it, um, you know, from that point. And so really going from that urban planning perspective, as you said, the story really starts in the mid 60s. And then I take it all the way up into the early 1990s. The the the, the, the thing about it, and if you talk to uh, Bronx historians about mm -hmm. Co-op City and, and you know where I'm going with this, that um, yeah. it was blamed, if you will, right. for kind of sucking mm -hmm. the life out of places like the Grand Concourse right. when it was built because, frankly, white people mm -hmm. left and, and populated mm -hmm. Co-op City. I'm just fascinated by going through the book and going through what you have mm -hmm. written is that then it was turned around and there was a mm -hmm. white, flight, white flight away from Co-op City. Yeah. It, yeah. It, it, it blew my mind. So oh. I, I don't know how, where you want to go here because I've moved sure. about 20 years of history there. Yeah, but yeah. just talk about the uniqueness, mm -hmm. I guess, of Co-op City and who was there, yeah. who is there, and what that has contributed sure. to its stability or lack of. I don't know. No, I mean, I think it's a really important question. I'm glad you brought it up. Um, and it is I think I think it's obvious. You have yeah. to bring it no, up. No, completely. About it. I mean, because, you know, it's funny. When you talk to people who are not from the Bronx, the first thing they talk about, like, is, oh, my God, I've seen Co-op City from the highway. It's so huge. Right. Or, whatever. or from the plane. <laughs> exactly. Exactly, right? If you land in LaGuardia, you kind of go over it. But people who are from the Bronx, this that's exactly the story is this one about so basically, the, there is some truth to this, right? Co-op City is built, so it's conceived in 1965, 64, right. 65. Now, the thing to note is actually when it's conceived, it's thought of as an antidote to white flight because they, at that point, planners are That's thinking right. about, I know, right? I, I was surprised by this, but what it is, is that urban planners in the mid 60s are thinking about white flight in municipal terms. They're saying like, look, the point is not is to keep white people from leaving New York. Um, all together. And it's really in part, I, I think, a consequence of what happens in Co-op City, but also more general changes in the way in which uh, cities are thought of in the mid 60s, that really during the planning process, officials start stop thinking about white flight in municipal terms, they start thinking about it more in terms of neighborhood, right? And what because what they're watching with Co-op City is that disproportionately it was attractive to, in fact, the people it was supposed to be attractive to on some level, right? Um, working and lower middle-class people from right. the West Bronx. Now, 
And so it is indeed true that a somewhat shockingly high percentage, I should check the numbers, but that's okay. A relatively large percentage of, of, you know, the population of the, the sort of census tracts that make up um, the concourse area in particular. I mean, this is where my mother's family is from this area, you know, they, that they moved to, to co-op. Um, and indeed that um, does contribute somewhat to the destabilization of you, you just have to excuse me because it is sure. thundering outside my window. I, so. I got it. Yeah. It's the Here's beauty the of virtual people. television. Yeah, totally. So what I was saying was that, you know, so it is true to some degree that narrative is right. A lot of white people do, particular Jewish people, leave the concourse to move to co-op city um, in the, the mid to late 60s. Right. That said, I want to kind of complicate that narrative a little bit because I want to say two things. One is if you ask the people that move to co-op and this is whether they're white or black or Puerto Rican or whatever, their understanding of why they moved to co-op is almost always related to the fact their sense that their neighborhood was already getting worse. And one of the weird things about the chronology of Bronx history is you'll see people talk about, well, the real problem was Co-op City, or the real problem was the building of the Cross Bronx Expressway, or the real right. problem, you know what I mean? There's all right. these different- are, and, and to be honest, I mean, my response to that is mm -hmm. each one of them <laughs> it was a problem. And so in the case of Co-op City though, the, the point I'm trying to, I wanna make two points. One is that that um, the people that are moving to co-op city from the concourse or whatever, the, the, the Jewish people who will ultimately make up the majority of the, the early right. population of co-op mm -hmm. city are not saying anything different about why they're moving to co-op city than the, the black and Hispanic people moving to co-op. The other thing that's right. really interesting. And, and that is a very okay. fundamental need for affordable quality mm -hmm. housing right. in a community that is unified and has other activities it's and is safe right is safe. i mean in the mid 60s you're what in late 60s especially you're watching crime rise in a lot of neighborhoods where you know working lower middle class people are living they feel like their lives regardless of what race they are are getting less safe now that's and the other thing i'll say really I, I just want to move you ahead oh, so we sure, can talk sure. about because we're going to spend all the time on no this no of course, get some of other course. things so go ahead. What 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 is the second part that yeah, you want so to say? Yeah, so the other thing I was going to say is Co-op City. When people move there, and this I'm going to move to the 80s in a second. When when everybody moves to Co-op City in the early 70s, hard to get card numbers, but we're talking about basically the same racial diversity of the city as a whole, and an enormous amount of enthusiasm in the 60s for living in a racially diverse community. One of the few that sort of seems stably racially diverse at that time. That said, then by the time we get to the 80s, this is what you were talking about. We start seeing, really starting in the late 70s, a kind of white flight from co-op city. From co-op city. I, 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 want, I want to ask you, we're, we're yeah. going to run out of time. If we, no, if, I'm if sorry. This is, this is a whole college lecture for, it's practically sure, a whole sure, college sure. course. Um, <laughs> but um, this I thought was interesting, um, uh, was mm -hmm. the largest rent strike in history. Yes. Uh, mm -hmm. 1975. Um, talk about that. Yeah, so the rent strike, it basically costs in Co-op City go up in the for residents right. in the, through across the 70s. And it's due to a combination of factors, everything from inflation to corruption. And yes, there's an example of the leader of the rent strike, um, Charles Rosen, um, and some of the people that worked in the rent strike was supported in Co-op City by, um, we don't have hard numbers, but at least three quarters of the people that live there. And also by, um, you know, local, like, you know, um, New York figures, even national figures um, on the left, someone like Cesar Chavez, right? So, you know, telegram in support right. of the rent strike. And it needs to be, and, and it's, you know, really in 1975, there are all of these protests in this, in this, um, in the city against austerity politics. Co-op city in some ways is the most successful of those. And, and to me, to me, the mm -hmm. thing that really defines it and, and in many ways, mm -hmm. um, characterizes Co-op City, that you could get that many people on the same page. A hundred percent. Because not, not only, uh, let's see, where, where, how mm -hmm. many buildings? Uh, I, I got 36 buildings. Is that what 35 buildings. 35 buildings. There we go. 35 towers, 236 townhouses. Mm -hmm. Hundreds of thousands of New Yorkers have lived there. Sure. The fact that you could get that number of people mm -hmm. on the same page to do Absolutely. it. And then as a result, they secured um, basically control of their own right. property. That right. is a fundamental thing that, frankly, many housing projects are right. still and working it, it on. And it winds today. up 
being a mixed blessing. I mean, one of the things, so the book catalog talks about the wrench strike. It talks about in the immediate aftermath of the wrench strike, that um, local control actually is a kind of Pyrrhic victory. It doesn't, they, they still have to pay this enormous debt. They're still facing all the same problems. Costs continue to go up, et cetera. But the other thing I argue is- So it didn't, I, it didn't solve everything that they didn't want. Not immediately, no, no. Right. But by the late 80s, one of the things I, I show is that, you know, the state and the city become more accommodationist. They're more willing to work with Co-op City. And part of that, I argue, has to do with the fact that the Ren strike kind of put the fear of God in, right. in Albany. And, and, uh, and, you know, there's, there's great example. Uh, the, mm -hmm. uh, that's a great example to understand how tenant control yep. might work. Of right. course, the size of the population of Co-op City mm -hmm. contributed to it, and what we've already said is getting people uh, on, um, uh, on on the same page. Mm -hmm. um, so, w w where are we at now? Are you going to go do a, a book on the next twenty-five years, uh, possibly? No, I don't, I don't because know. Because this this is incredibly well detailed. It's incredibly oh. well researched. Uh, and for anybody who lives in Co-op City, who ever lived mm -hmm. in Co-op City, or wants to study housing in the mm. Bronx in the city of New York, as it says, it's the story of um, uh, Co-op City and the story of New York in many ways mm. it is. Right. Thank you. Yeah. No, thank you very much. And honestly, I don't know what's next. I do. I've been talking to some people in Co-op City and I'd like to help, um, you know, Co-op City residents and the community as a whole kind of preserve some of their memories. You know, I the inter the book is built on archival sources, but also a lot of interviews with people. And I don't want those all to get lost, not just the work I've done, but the work other people have done there. Right. Um, kind of letting people be aware of their own the, the history of their own community. Um, my own research, it's funny, I, you know, as I said, I'm trained as a German historian. Um, this is a book, obviously, of American history. I'm not sure what the next project all is. All right. Like, all right. So we won't, we won't, we won't, we so, won't hold your feet to the fire. Listen, yeah, yeah. This, this is an achievement. And, and Thank you. given, I really uh, given the, um, uh, mm -hmm. the, the lack of history of so many mm -hmm. aspects of Bronx life, uh, this tells quite a story. And you've done a tremendous job with it, uh, ladies and gentlemen. Freedom Land, Co-op City, and the Story of New York, um, available wherever books are available. And uh, Anne-Marie uh, San Martino, thank you so much for joining us. Thank you for bringing us a piece of mm -hmm. Bronx history in detail that we never had before. Mm -hmm. And um, we hope um, that you'll leave Michigan behind and come back and <laughs> find another little neighborhood yes. that you want to write about. And Much to the chagrin of Oberlin College. We <laughs> and I will say, I will be back in New York Um uh, for a couple of talks in October, at the end of October. About, about the book and about this? About the book, oh, you yeah. got to let us know when that And is. I will definitely let you know about those and, Great. you know, other events that, that might be coming up Great. soon. So, uh, and Marie San Martino, thank you so much. Thank we you so much. Time. And uh, folks, guess what? That means it's the end of the Bronx Buzz. Two <laughs> great guests, two very interesting segments, and uh, that's how we do it. And guess what? We'll do it again next week. Good night.